Good evening, everybody. Before we begin our visual with a piece of music from Ukraine, I'd like to mention uh, the Reverend Ron Korn, chaplain of All Saints Tenerife North, who died yesterday in the UK after a short illness. He'll be much missed by his chaplaincy, by his fellow clergy, and of course by his family. And please hold them in your prayers over the coming days. Our music from Ukraine is a setting of Ave Maria by the modern Ukrainian composer Valentin Silvestrov and has been recorded in Ukrainian by the choir of Truro Cathedral as part of their efforts to raise funds for Ukrainian refugees.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. My God shall make my darkness to be bright. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 82 Arise, O God, and judge the earth. God, our deliverer, when the foundations are shaken and justice has departed, defend the poor and needy and give your people strength to fight all wrong in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly? and show partiality to the wicked. Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are gods, children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. Arise, O God, and judge the earth. God, our deliverer, when the foundations are shaken and justice has departed, Defend the poor and needy, and give your people strength to fight all wrong. 
in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Old Testament reading in from, is from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and, now, and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear the Nunc Dimittis to a setting from the Teze community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the third Sunday in Lent, 
the sermon text in the church calendar of the evangelical church in Germany was the one we have had read to us. Just released from hospital, I followed the televised service at which the newly elected presiding bishop, Dr. Annette Kursus, preached. This text struck chords in me and has continued to resonate in me over the past days. We are not yet over the pandemic, pandemic which has held us in its grip these two years. Now rages a hideous war in the heart of Europe, which is already causing unimaginable destruction and bloodshed, and has to date seen millions, mainly women and children, fleeing from their country. And then there are our own personal issues, questions, uncertainties. Enough is enough, we cry. Enough is enough is what was on Elijah's lips and in his heart. Elijah is on the run. He is running away to save his life. He has blood on his hands after the great drama of proving his God's supremacy over the Canaanite God, Baal. It ended in wreaking violent vengeance on the priests of Baal. The king hates him, and the king's wife Jezebel has sworn to get her revenge for what he did to her priests. The whole exercise was for nothing, and for worse than nothing. Disillusioned and exhausted, Elijah went on a day's journey into the wilderness, the place of total withdrawal. He comes to sit under a broom tree and wants nothing more than to take his leave of everything, even of his calling as God's prophet, even of his life. It is enough. For him, there was only truth or death. He had been convinced that he had done all this for his God. But in effect, there was only violence, bloodshed, and revenge. No victory celebration. His entire operation had failed. He who was responsible for so much disarray and confusion was himself fleeing for his life. He was destroying himself by the destruction he had caused. It was enough. And today it is enough. This is the cry we hear from the people in Ukraine in the stark light of innocent civilians, newborn babies, the aged and incapac incapacitated dying, the destruction of hospitals, shelters, infrastructure. It is enough. We hear the voices of mothers and children who are forced to leave their nearest and dearest behind with a minimum of belongings and clutching their mobiles trying to keep at least the communication lines with their loved ones open. It is enough, is the stinging condemnation that comes from his beatitude, Metropolitan Onufri of Kiev and all Ukraine of the Moscow Patriarchate. Such a war has no excuse, neither from God nor from people. It is enough, cry out the voices of Jews and Christians in Ukraine as they pray the ancient prayer of Psalm 31. This prayer written several thousand years ago is a living prayer today. And it is enough is also the message from the archbishops of Canterbury and York, lamenting with the people of Ukraine and praying for the victims of the war. It is enough is the prayer of the world day after day and night after night as we plead God for peace. 
And where is God's answer? Our text tells us that God hears and God does answer into Elijah's individual situation of utter despair, God intervenes, but his intervention is simple and unspectacular. We are told an angel nudges him to discover bread and water at his side. They are the most basic elements to sustain him. The first time to ease him into sleep, the sleep he so desperately needed, and the second time to strengthen him for the next lap of his journey in God's mission. These simple basic elements are indeed enough for Elijah to pick himself up and continue his journey to the holy mountain. He must not run away now. He is to live with precisely this self-destructive experience behind him, though in a new and transformed way. And what is more, he discovers that what God, God provides is indeed enough. And friends, it is in echoing these three words of a battered warrior that we too can look and find signs of hope and courage for the next steps. The cry of despair turns into affirmation of trust. Firstly, those who live outside the immediate danger zone can act as angels that provide the basic necessities for those who are on the run. Food, shelter, assistance in a diversity of ways for those fleeing danger to find their feet in a strange land. God needs a whole host of angels in these days. And for ourselves, we too can find new strength in discovering that God can and will turn the cry of despair into a prayer of thanksgiving. It is enough for God to provide the daily measure of strength and courage to continue our work of mission and service. And God will continue to do so, mostly in unspectacular ways as for Elijah. Remember when Elijah reached the holy mountain a few verses further from the text we read, he still expected the awesome presence of God to manifest itself in the fierce wind and the terrifying fire. But it was in the still, small voice heard in the silence that he experienced God's presence. Jesus said to his troubled disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Jesus spoke these words of comfort to his disciples in the face of his passion. He himself was to experience the moment of crying out, it is enough when he prayed that God spare him drinking the cup which was awaiting him. Yet he followed the path of suffering to the point of death on the cross where he cried, it is finished. The work of salvation is complete. Thank God we live in the knowledge of Easter day. Until the final vindication, we have the assurance that we will be given what we need to live positively day by day and to work for true peace in all walks of life, to love humanity and all creation on this planet that is precious in God's eyes. Amen. And so we pray that you would deliver us by the mystery of your incarnation 
by your baptism, fasting and temptation, by your cross and passion, and by your glorious resurrection and ascension. We ask you. Hear us, good Lord. That you would rule and govern aright your holy church universal, giving light to all clergy to understand your word, and in their preaching and life to commend it. Most especially, we pray for the churches, clergy and congregations of Ukraine and Russia. We ask you. Hear us, good Lord. That you would keep and strengthen Queen Elizabeth and all those in authority to bring them to humility and faith. Give them grace to execute justice and to pursue truth in unity, peace and concord. Especially we pray at this time for President Zelensky, President Putin and for those who lead NATO and the European Union. We ask you. Hear us. Good Lord. That you would bring help and comfort to all in danger, fear and desolation, preserving those who must travel far from home, leaving behind those they love. That you would provide for and defend the orphans, the mothers with young children and the sick and handicapped. We ask you. Hear us, good Lord. <clears throat> that you would forgive our enemies and turn their hearts. That you would look with mercy on those waging a war they did not choose and do not understand. That you would prosper the cause of those who speak truth in the media and take a stand for integrity. We ask you. Hear us, good Lord. That you would grant favour to all those who seek to offer welcome and shelter, warmth and food to those escaping from conflict. We ask you. Hear us. Good Lord. <clears throat> that you would swiftly bring an end to our present darkness. Keep safe those who have no hope but you. And bring us through this time to know our need of you. The only sovereign Lord and the saviour of all who call upon you. We ask you. Hear us, good Lord. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, we pray by ourselves whilst listening to the prayer in Ukrainian. Отче наш, що є на небесах, нехай святиться ім'я Твоє, нехай прийде Царство Твоє, нехай буде воля Твоє, як на небі, так і на землі. Хліб наш насушний, дай нам сьогодні, і прости нам провини наші, як і ми прощаємо винуватцям нашим. І не веди нас у спокусу, але визволи нас від лукавого, бо Твоє є царство, і сила, і слава на віки. Амінь. And we hear this prayer for Ukraine, written in the last few weeks by the English composer John Rutter, and recorded last by 300 singers at St Mary Magdalene Church in South London.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And before we close, a reminder that we will gather at this time on every Wednesday through the rest of Lent and into Holy Week. And the Bishop's Lent and Easter appeal is for all people who are affected by the war in Ukraine. You can see some web addresses on the screen there, and you can always find out more through the diocesan website. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>